Hello and welcome to the Album Man and I thought to do something a little different today, something I haven't done before and this is not going to be a regular monthly series as you can see by the title, it's DVDs I bought recently um, for, I don't know, 2012 really, mainly 2012, bit of 2013 but um, yeah, this covers quite a large span of time, I don't buy films as frequently as I buy CDs and vinyls, but you know, I've still quite a lot of cool films that I got fairly recently, so you know, a full it show. Okay, so there's a good mixture from Japanese, quite a lot of Japanese, to European, Brazilian, American. So we'll start with the Japanese, and we'll start with one of the few Blu rays. As I don't have many Blu rays, um, I do have a PS3 and a HD TV, but I just find general Blu rays are that bit more expensive. Anyway, this is the Japanese film Paprika, and this is an anime, and it is basically, you know, it's pretty easy to predict, it's a Japanese anime, so it has a female protagonist, and it has tentacles in it, and it's a really, really good film, actually. It's, it's to do with dreams, it's a bit like an animated Inception, and it's the these dreams get amalgamated together and start taking over the world and actually coming into reality and this gal, Paprika, has to stop it and yeah, if you like sort of really weird Japanese anime type films you'll probably enjoy this, it's a really good film definitely recommend it um, next, my favourite animated um, film and favourite animated Japanese film the classic Spirited Away I'm sure most people have at least heard of this film I just think it's a masterpiece, to be honest. I just think it's such a, a wonderful journey through um, a fantasy land. Um, it did win the um, Oscar for Best Animated Film in, like, 2003. And, yeah, I just think it's so, so genius. Um, if you haven't seen it, you should definitely watch it. I mean, it's only a PG. It's not particularly violent or anything. It's just a, just a really nice film. Now, from the non-violentness of Spirited Away, we get to the violent darkness of one of my favourite Japanese films, Confessions. And if you haven't heard of this, you really should. It is dark as hell. If you like dark psychological thrillers, then you'll probably enjoy this film. It has a stunning acting performance by, um, oh god, what's her name? Uh no idea what her name is off the top of my head but anyway, fantastic actress and basically the premise of it is that it's a teacher whose daughter is um, murdered and she knows that it was two people in the class she teaches and basically she tries to get her revenge by um, giving them well, injecting AIDS into their milk cartons and yeah, it does sound a pretty twisted film, to be honest, and it is, it's twisted as hell, but it really is, it has, you know, twists and turns, the opening scene is just 20 minutes of her talking to her class, and it's probably the greatest opening scene of a film I've ever seen. It splits different chapters, it looks at it from the teacher's point of view, from the parent's point of view, from the children's point of view. Really well directed, I absolutely love the director, and next we're going to have another film by him. Even I can never remember his name. Um, just honestly can't. And this is another dark film. This is Memories of Matsuko. And this is really like a dark Amelie, if you've ever seen the French film Amelie. It's basically just about a woman's life. This boy um, finds out about her aunt and basically sort of discovers her life um, through her eyes, from a small child to growing up, and how she tries to make the best of things, but things don't really go her way. It's, yeah, it's like an anti-Amelie. Anti Amelie's all about, you know, sort of, it's a happy, feel-good film. This is, this is not. She tries to be happy, but it doesn't go too well for her. Good film. One of the weirdest films I probably have in my collection is Uzumaki. Um, it's actually a 15, the extras are an 18. And, yeah, it's, it's what, what to say about this film? Well, basically it's a film about spirals. Quite honestly, it's a film about spirals. And spirals possess a village and start killing people. And it's not a happy film, really. Um, you know, it's 
it's Japanese. It's quite dodgy. The special effects are quite dodgy. Um, it, and it has children turning into snails. So if you like the idea of children turning into snails, it's maybe the film for you. It's not that good. It's a sort of B-movie type thing, but it, it's a bit of fun. I wouldn't recommend it as much as stuff like Confessions and Memories of Matsuka, though. If you massively into Japanese film, it, it's worth for a bit of fun if you like the idea of the spy wars attacking a village. Next, we come to a film, I haven't seen this yet, but it's meant to be a masterpiece, and this is Tokyo Story, and another Japanese film. And the thing that interests me about this is that so many great directors like Scorsese and Ford Coppola call this one of the greatest films of all time. So as I love my Japanese film, and, you know, I thought, why not check it out? I haven't had time to watch it yet, but it's quite an old film, it's in black and white, and, yeah, looking forward to watching it. Now we move on to, I think these are Korean, I'm pretty sure these are Korean, if they're not, sorry, but I'm um, pretty sure they are. And this is Battle Royale. And I'm sure most people know what this film is, to be honest. It's basically a group of school children let on an island and they have to kill each other until only one survives. Really quite a brutal, violent, bloody film. <laughs> really good, though. I really enjoyed it. It's a lot better than the crappy Hunger Games or whatever. That's just like a kid's version of this. Now, if you if you want, if you like the idea of people surviving on an island, having to kill each other, this is the film. It's an absolute classic. It's got some such funny moments in it, like the woman. There's this, like, woman in orange who, like, does sort of an almost commentary type thing and talks about like the wars and stuff. So funny. <laughs> so, so Korean to be honest. Really good film. And then I haven't watched it yet, but I have the sequel, Battle Royale 2. Honestly, don't know what to expect from this. I think it's going to be a bit dodgy, but um, it's not the easiest to get hold of actually. But um, yeah, who knows. Okay, so we moved on from the Asian films, and now we move on to the European films. And I was talking about Memories of Matsuko being the anti-Amelie. Well, here we have Amelie, and this is one of my absolute favourite films of all time. And this is the nice sort of two-disc special edition version. I just love this film. I think it has some of the best cinematography in the film. It's shot in Paris, and if you don't know, it's basically just simply about the... Girl, Amelie Poulain and her life and how she tries to find love and it sounds, you know, like a bit corny and whatever but it really isn't. It's a truly beautiful film and Audrey Tautou is simply stunning in it. Um, really, really good film. It's very much a feel-good film but um, I love it a lot, a lot. And now from the happiness of Amelie to the darkness of the German film Downfall, which I believe to have the greatest acting performance of all time, and that is Bruno Ganz as Adolf Hitler. It is quite uncanny how much of resemblance he manages to have to Hitler, like including the um, shaking of the left hand, I think it was left hand, yeah, because Hitler had a sort of a very shaky left hand, and he gets that, he just captures every detail perfectly and yeah I mean it's quite a, a twisted film it contains you know Nazi a lot of people committing suicide and one of the scenes I think that um oh it is quite a hard scene is when um I think it's Gerbils he um poisons all of his children and oh it, it, it's really it's a well done scene but oh it's really quite cringing to just see him kill all these Really quite innocent children. Um, fantastic film about the final days of World War Two. If you have any interest in World War Two, definitely watch it. Now to another German film, and this is an Oscar winner, and this is The Lives of Others. And this is set um, in the 80s and, you know, after the Berlin Wall. And it's basically just about how, you know, the East European government is trying to keep a hold on the people and, you know, spying on them. And it's just basically about um, this man spying on this playwright. But it's a really good film. Lots to say. I don't want to spoil anything, so I don't want to give too much away. But, um, yeah, really good film about that time period. 
Next Brazilian film I haven't seen yet, City of God. Can't really say much about it. I haven't seen it. I think it's Brazilian. Pretty sure it is. Okay, now we move on to some comedies. Not many. I'm not a massive comedy fan. First, the disappointing, or expectedly disappointing, which means it wasn't that disappointing, Ted. I wasn't expecting much for this film. It didn't really give me much. It was okay. At first, it was good. It seemed like it had potential. But um, they just turned to a really cliched one com I love Seth MacFarlane. Adore Family Guy. One of my favourite animated shows. However, there are better, like The Life and Times of Tim. But I will be talking about that in a future video. And, um, yeah, it's... You know, the bear, it, it, it's a decent cat. It has its moments of funniness, but it just became so much of a cliched one com towards the end, it got quite arduous. Um, I, I, I wouldn't really recommend it, to be honest. I feel I haven't had the chance to see but The D Dictator. One of my favourite films of all time is Sasha Baron Cohen's Borat. I think it's the funniest film ever created, and I think it's absolute genius. But that's because of the interaction with real people. A bit like Bruno, even though Bruno wasn't half as good. Now this film, I was sceptical, I haven't seen it yet, but I'm sceptical because, quite honestly, it has actors. And, I don't know, a Sasha Baron Cohen film would work with actors. I'll see. Okay, and on to the more serious American films. We'll start with a Blu-ray. And this is The Dark Knight Rises, the ultraviolet. I don't know what all this ultraviolet stuff is now, but, you know, apparently you felt Blu-ray is now ultraviolet. Whatever. Anyway, um, the conclusion to Christopher Nolan's um, Dark Knight or Batman trilogy. And I absolutely love this film. I know some people have criticised it quite heavily, but I think it's fantastic. I really love all of it. I just, um, a bit of a spoiler alert here, but um, I have to say, the only thing I found disappointing was the way in which Bane dies. I think he could have died in a bit more of an epic way. Um, I thought that was a bit silly, but I love the ending of this film, I'm not going to spoil the ending, but I think the ending really suits what Christopher Nolan was going for, and suits it, to be honest. Um, yeah, I, I don't see why people are moaning about the ending. People like to moan about endings, especially last year, like with the whole Mass Effect free ending stuff. Oh. Anyway, another blue which I got for 250 yesterday, and... That's entertainment. Really happy. Inception, not for Christopher Nolan film. Christopher Nolan is one of my favourite directors, especially because of Memento. And it seems everyone's watched like Inception and the Batmans and they say, Oh, you know, I love Christopher Nolan, love Inception, it's so clever and then Batman and it's like, Well, see Memento. You can't judge him till you've really seen Memento. That's his masterpiece, one of the greatest films ever made in my opinion. Um but yeah, I love this film. Um, a little, t you know, tad bit confusing, but um, certainly want to watch it a second time. But yeah, really interesting film about dreams. Hard to explain, to be honest. I haven't seen it for a while, to be honest, since it came out, really. Yeah, good film. Um, okay, the classic Fight Club, which um, has... Meatloaf in it, which is always cool to have Meatloaf. I mean, he is really good. I love Meatloaf in this film, really do. But no, I love this film. I think it's a really excellently done psychological thriller. The directing in it is just sublime by David Fincher, and I think Brad Pitt and Edward Norton are just fantastic in this film. Um, really fantastic. Um, yeah, loads of twists and turns, and I don't want to say too much, but in the basic premise there is that these two people, they set up a fight club, and, you know, basically bare knuckles fighting, and it's about what happens, and, yeah, I don't want to give too much away. If you haven't seen it, which I doubt, do watch it. Next we have a Scorsese and De Niro film. I haven't actually watched this yet, but do want to, and this is called Cape Fear. And um, it basically just seems to be the reason I wanted it was it's a thriller with Scorsese and De Niro. Don't really know anything else about it except for that, but that should be enough. I mean, you know, Goodfellas is one of the best films of all time, and that has De Niro and Scorsese, so this might be alright. Next, we have a couple of weird films that really I don't know much about, <laughs> but for why not? Now this is quite interesting, this is Identity, I haven't watched it yet, but it's a psychological thriller, I'm led to believe, and it has Ray Liotta from Goodfellas, always called to see Ray Liotta in the film, because you never ever see him, 
even though he was fantastic in Goodfellas, absolutely fantastic, but never seemed to get much of a job since. Anyway, he's in this, and it seems that ten strangers are brought together in a rainstorm, and um, basically, like, I, I don't know, they seem to die one by one, basically. So it sounds kind of cool. And then we have Frailty, and this seems to basically just be about some killer and finding the killer's identity or something. I honestly don't know. We have Kevin Spacey in The Usual Suspects. I've heard this is meant to be a really, really good film. Um, won two Academy Awards. And, um, yeah, it's meant to be about a, a mythic crime lord and convincing that he exists. And, yeah, it sounds really interesting, sort of gangster -y film, and I do love that type of film. Okay, the last two films are some British films about life in London. And, yeah, so this is Kid Hood and Adult Hood. And these are two fantastic films. And the guy who wrote and stars in them is Noel Clark, who I knew him as Mickey in um, Doctor Who, the sort of Christopher Eccleston days of Doctor Who. Mickey was, I think, Rose's um, boyfriend, yeah. And, God, a very different character in this. He's a, a brutal cockney bully and thug. Has a fantastic twist at the end, Kid Hood. Really fantastic twist. And, um, yeah, really good. And in this film, I can't say what it's about because it spoils the end of this, but it continues basically six years on from the, from the climatic events at the end of this film. And, yeah, it's basically just a film about gangs in London. Um, a lot of sort of, you know, darkish themes and, you know, violence and drugs and things like that. And culminates in a party. And what happens, it's just really well done. Really well done. Definitely recommend these if you're a fan of sort of London gang films. Okay, so this has been the Album Man talking about films for once. So thanks for watching if you've watched all the way through. And yeah, so can't wait to subscribe. And long live Rock and Roll. Well.